Hi Yogi and welcome to another episode of The Breathing Club with me, Oshana. In this particular class we'll be looking at Ujjayi Pranayama um, and as always I will be leaving some timestamps in the video description below so that you can really hop around this topic to your heart's content. Essentially I'll be talking about the background, giving you just a little bit of context to this technique. We'll also be talking about the benefits of practicing it on a regular basis and I will give you some pointers, some tips and tricks um, just to really maximize those benefits for yourself before we dive into a real-time uh, step-by-step guide that will hopefully help some of you to find your Ujjayi breath and for those of you that already have it, I'm hoping that it will allow you to really solidify that technique so that you can apply it to your physical practice. And I should also preempt that next week I will be releasing a slow flow that will be a breath led practice. So really we will be using our Ujjayi Pranayama, applying it to our physical asana practice and allowing the breath to really lead us into and out of the postures and really allowing that to be our main focus so that we're really sort of advancing our uh, practice in that way. Now, diving right in here, of course, I always like to start with the translation. So Ujjayi really translates as the victorious breath. Some people like to refer to it as the breath that is victorious over prana, which is our life force. Um, so the sort of simplest way to explain this technique is really that you're directing the breath through your nostrils. The mouth is closed and you're using the muscles around the throat to actually constrict the passageway that the air goes through as it travels down into the lungs. And that creates a certain amount of resistance within the breath so that actually as you're inhaling, you're having to pull the breath down a little bit harder. And as you exhale, there's a little bit of a push to get the breath out of the lungs. And that sort of gentle push-pull really gives uh, the breath a sort of well-modulated, soothing sound that really is similar to the sound of the waves rolling in and out of the ocean, landing on the beach. And for most of us, as soon as we can master this technique, our breath tends to double in length. So both on the inhale and exhale. Um, and of course, you might ask yourself, well, why would I want my breath to be that long? That seems ridiculous. But really, slowing down the breath in such a drastic way sends a very immediate signal to our nervous system and switches it into parasympathetic response mode. And that really means that that's sort of the mode that your uh, nervous system will be in when it feels safe and relaxed. And so it's an immediate way to slow down your heart rate, to reduce your blood pressure and to actually slow down your breath even further. Um, and of course, that is helpful for those of us who live in busy places, who might work in stressful environment, who have a tendency to feel tense or anxious. And really, it's a way for you to take back control of your nervous system and to almost override what could be going on in the immediate environment around you and to send an immediate signal to your brain to say, everything's okay don't worry. And then your brain responds by bringing your body back into a state of calm and homeostasis, which is quite helpful. Um, so, of course, I've also mentioned the sound of this breathing technique, which becomes really important in our physical yoga practice. So for those of us who are able to maintain this way of breathing throughout our practice, it actually becomes almost like a metronome that tells you how fast or how slow you should be moving. And it also is an indication, you know, once you're, you begin to struggle to maintain this breath, it's usually a sign that you've pushed a little bit too hard, you've gone a little bit too deep or, um, you know, you're sort of taking yourself into a space that your body doesn't naturally want to be in. And actually, that's something we don't want in our yoga practice. We want to maintain ease, fluidity, sukha. Um, 
And finally, I would also say that for a lot of us, we have a tendency to either focus a lot on things that have happened in the past. So, you know, this is sort of the category of human being that I'm in is where, you know, I'll fixate on things that I said wrong in a previous class that I taught during the day or, you know, things that have happened in the past. And then there's the other Uh, category of human being maybe you're a mixture of both (laughs) the other category of human being is really people who think a lot more about things that haven't happened yet Uh, so focusing a lot on maybe things that you still have to do in your day and overthinking that or getting anxious about stuff that is you know an event that's sort of two or three weeks away from you and really uh, when we spend time in yoga, bringing our attention to the breath and very directly focusing on the breath, it actually helps us to really attach ourselves to the present moment and keep our focus there. And when you read any of the Buddhist teachings, this is really the essence of happiness in life. The essence of peace is staying as present as we possibly can. I think if you've ever had that sort of experience in your physical yoga practice where you came out of that class and you thought, God, I have not felt this just content with my life in a really long time. You know, my hunch is that actually the reason you felt that way is because you were really focused on the postures and that focus kept you in the present moment rather than allowing your brain to go all over the place. And so the breath can really do the same thing for you. Now, a few tips and tricks here. So I think the first thing to mention is that there's only really uh, one mention of Ujjayi Pranayama in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which is sometimes referred to as the Yoga Bible. Whether we agree with that or not is really up for debate. Um, and But I think because it gets a special mention, I think we should sort of talk about that. And so Patanjali says that through our Ujjayi, we should cultivate both dirga which is length of the breath and sukshumna which is smoothness so those are the two qualities we're really trying to embody and embrace when we're doing this technique um Equally, I would like to remind those of you who have been following these episode by episode guides that last uh, episode we were talking about Sama Vritti Pranayama and we actually want to bring that into this technique. So really our Ujjayi breath, we want to cultivate the same length of inhale and exhale, so the same duration And we also want the inhale and exhale to have the same strength. So you're putting the same amount of pressure as you're pushing the air through this constricted throat airway. You put the same amount of pressure and force behind the inhale as you do with the exhale um, to really equalize the breath. And through an equalized breath, you bring your mind into a state of equilibrium as well. Uh, I also... Uh, always like to say that my sort of rule of thumb for Ujjayi Pranayama is that on your yoga mat you want to be able to hear your own breathing because as I said that's going to give you uh, a sense of how fast or slow you should be going in your practice but if you were going to be in a group class and let's say there was someone on a yoga mat maybe uh, two or three feet away from you and um, you know, they they were practicing next to you. Ideally, that person should not be able to hear you. So, you know, we always want to think in our yoga practice that we are also cultivating our himsa, which is non-harm. So, uh, of course, ujjayi is helpful for our practice. But if if we're doing it very loud and we almost are cultivating a Darth Vader type of sound, that could be very distracting for the person practicing next to us. And it might become, uh, you know, make their practice more difficult. So we don't want to be a sort of negative impact on them. And of course, some lineages do disagree with that. Other lineages, for example, in Ashtanga yoga, they want you to cultivate an extremely loud Ujjayi breath so that the teacher can hear you as they're walking past and make sure that your breath is exactly in time with the rest of the class. In my personal lineage, that is not the case. Um, My lineage really, uh, even the name is Ishta Yoga, which means 
you know, very much uh, individualized practice. So we want to make it as specific to you as possible. And every single person has a slightly different way of breathing and a slightly different length of breath. So we actually want to embrace that individuality in our practice. And finally, I would say, um, in terms of tips and tricks, really, I do, you know, having just given you that advice, I do actually slightly vary my Ujjayi breath. So if I'm doing a very dynamic flow class that's quite strenuous, then I try to keep the breath as mellow, calm and quiet as possible. But if I'm doing a yin practice uh, that where you know, it's quite a cooling practice, I would actually tend to make the breath a little bit more forceful, maybe even a tiny bit louder, so that it really becomes a bit more heating, and it creates a bit of heat in the body, and you, you know, as you get more confidence with this technique, you will notice that as you change that breath very, very slightly, it has subtle differences on how you feel, and how your body feels, Um, and really before we dive into um, the teaching, I just also wanted to say that, um, you know, for some people, I'm going to give you one or two pieces of instruction and you'll immediately know what you're supposed to do. Because for some of you, you've probably accidentally done this technique and you just didn't know what it was called and you know you didn't realize it had a purpose or a benefit to you for some other people this technique can take many years to understand and actually be able to master because really constricting these muscles in the throat can be quite tricky and it's a very subtle sensation so understanding and feeling that can be really difficult so uh, go into this practice with a sense of forgiveness and compassion for yourself if it doesn't immediately work out don't just give up Um, it is a more advanced practice so don't just expect it to immediately fall into your lap and work right away that's just unfortunately not uh, how yoga works sometimes, you know, sometimes we really have to stick with things for many, many years before we understand these techniques. And uh, we learn a lot along the way. And compassion is definitely one of the things I've learned the hard way. Um, And really, you know, before we dive into the practice, I think the last bit of advice is sort of to think about this breath almost as if you were trying to fog up a mirror that's very close to your face. So instead of pushing air out through, you know, well, initially we'll do this just through our mouth, which is a little bit easier to understand. Um, And as you're doing that, don't think about pressing the air out very forcefully. So it's not a, a case of, you know, blowing the air out. And, you know, when you force the air out in that way, it actually comes out quite cold. And what you want to ideally do is actually to let the air come out softly as if you're fogging up a mirror that's very close to you. And you should be able to feel that the breath comes out warm. And so that's really the sort of engagement in the throat that you want to find. And here, of course, we're going to dive into the practice. Uh, So find a comfortable seat. I'm going to sit with my heels in one line, but I have used a yoga block to support my sitting bones. And if you don't know how to sit comfortably and properly for your uh, breathing practice, and you might like to go back to the previous episode, the Samaviti episode, we covered that already. So when you're ready, just For a moment initially at the beginning, if you can close or soften the eyes, let the hands rest on top of your thighs and take a moment to really find your perfect seat. So make any adjustments to your sitting bones, your clothing, your spine, your shoulders, head, neck, maybe tucking the chin in slightly. And perfectly stacking your solar plexus, your pelvic floor, as well as the throat. Allowing the breath to gently soften and lengthen. 
allowing your attention, your mind to attach itself to the movement of the breath by following it intricately, movement by movement, moment by moment, really cultivating that ability to observe the breath in detail with a sense of almost childlike curiosity, as I often say. So how would you observe each breath if you were a toddler and you had never experienced the breath before? And I will say that probably the way that I'm going to teach you this technique might seem a little bit unconventional, but I have found that most of my students find this quite helpful. So initially, we're going to blink the eyes open and we'll be matching our breath to a hand movement that's going to allow us to actually visualize the breath. So we'll have the palms facing towards the ceiling. And as we inhale, we're going to bring the hands towards our face and send the breath down into the belly. And as we exhale, the palms press away. So almost a sense that the air is pressing out of the lungs. And again here, as soon as we understand what the movement is, we could close the eyes so that we can really focus on matching the movement of our hands to the movement of our breath. And that could be a little bit faster or a little bit slower for some of us. And of course, you know, if you're having a hard time finding that movement and that symmetry, or rather that synchronicity between the breath and the hands, you could always pause the video here and take a little bit longer to find that. Give yourself time and space. But if you feel you've got a good handle on it, then we'll slowly add a little bit more. And we will actually verbalize, vocalize our exhale by making a really soft ha sound. So as you inhale, send the breath down to the belly. Exhale. And that sound could be as loud or quiet as you like. If you've got pets around you, they're probably quite curious about what you're doing now. See if you can stay focused, not getting distracted. And again, thinking really about that fogging up of the mirror, that softness. As you keep the breath going. And some of you, again, might like a little bit more time to explore this idea. But really, if you think you've got a good handle on the muscles that are involved in making that sound in the back of the throat, then see if you can inhale, keeping the muscles restricted on the throat and breathe in through the, the mouth, which is a little bit easier at the beginning. So you should be able to hear that sound on the inhale and the exhale. And of course, having told you not to sound like Darth Vader right now, most of us do sound like that. So don't worry, we'll cultivate a quieter version of this a little bit later on. But again, give yourself a few moments to really have a solid sense of what it takes to make that sound on the inhale and exhale. Of course, for some of you, this is already a step too far and you'll want to come back to just the exhalation.
but you could also pause the video here if you would like a little bit more time. Otherwise, explore the most difficult step at this point. So see if you can keep those muscles restricted exactly as they are, but close the mouth and direct the breath through your nostrils now. And if you're anything like me, then at this point, you really have to slow your arm movement down quite drastically. But again, give yourself a few moments to really explore that breath, maybe even pausing here. Maybe for the last few moments, relaxing the hands on top of the knees, seeing if you can find some avritti of your ujjayi, so making the inhale and exhale approximately the same length of time and putting the same amount of pressure or force behind the breath on the inhale and exhale. Finding that fluidity of the inhale and the exhale, the consistency of that sound. Gradually, when you feel that you have had enough time to explore that, bring the palms to touch in front of your chest. Bow the forehead towards the fingertips. If you would like to plant a sankalpa, a good intention that will take you out of your practice, back into the real world, to the people you love. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the class. And of course, if you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, or things you would really like me to cover in this series, then drop me a comment down below. If you would like me to, to find me anywhere else online, all of my social media links are in the video description. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends to spread the good, good word. Hopefully I will see you back on your yoga mat next week for a breath led yoga practice. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye, Yogi.